time for another G.I. Joe toy review. I am sorry that this came out late this week. Uh, I was not feeling all that well on Tuesday. I'm, I'm getting better. I uh, developed a case of bronchitis, which you know, happens every year uh, on O2 again. Temporarily, uh, just keep my saturations up. They were at 89.90 this morning, which is not good. One at 92 or better. So, yeah, I was getting ready for work and thought, crap, I can't make it in if I can't breathe. So, um, didn't relax. It's not COVID-19, thank goodness. Um, treated a few cases of it, but I am dressed head to toe in protective gear, sanitize everything. So uh, I wear two masks, so chances are very low that I will get it, um, fingers crossed. Uh, but we are winning the battle on that. So guys, uh, fret not. We are figuring this out. We're getting on top of it. So today is a viewer request. Um, this is for uh, Agatha LaDuff. Uh, she requested to see this vehicle, uh, one of her favorites, and I am more than happy to oblige. Um, I do apologize, I am missing his gun, the, the driver's gun. I had it for a long time, and then when I started getting this review ready, I could not find it for the life of me. Uh, but I have one on order. It'll be coming in uh, by the end of the week. But um, everything else is complete on this. So let's go ahead and get into the review. We're going to be looking at the 19. 85 Mahler. Uh, the Mahler MBT, MBT stands for Manned Battle Tank. As we know in 82 when the Mobat came out, yes it was manned, but the driver sat right on top of the turret and was sort of vulnerable to weapons fire. They upgraded this. They made it look more like the M1 Abrams. There's a lot more bells and whistles to this. And it is a very sweet tank. It hit the shells in 85 as a part of the 4th series. It was a discontinued in 87. Uh, heavy metal was repackaged with new accessories and sold at a Joe convention. I wish I had that one. Uh, that would have been pretty cool. Could not find a picture of him. So I do apologize for that. But then again in 89, the leftovers were sold at Hasbro Direct. He looks the same, but his pants are a light green. Uh, the original retail price on the Mobat was $16.99. Um, I do not have, I did not have this one as a kid. Um, John did have it, um, but he left it at home with his father in Colorado. It's a little too big to bring home in a suitcase. But um, I do have a very prime example of the Mobat. Uh, actually, I can't remember how I got this one. Oh. Bought it from a gentleman in Canada. That's where I got it. Uh, the motor does run. I did a um, quick look um, of the Mobat versus the Mahler um, video a few about a year ago, and uh, Mahler is absolutely faster than the Mobat. Um, it does have some of its drawbacks, and I will point those out in the review. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at this vehicle. It's quite large, as you can see. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at the file card. I am fortunate enough to not have a cut file card. Um, this came inside and wasn't um, attached to the box that I know of. It was in a bag with the action figure. It says right here, Mauer MBT tank driver, code name Heavy Metal. Um, Hasbro Bradley, that's when they... Um, just start emerging with Milton Bradley. Uh, the file name is uh, Gurdian Sherman R, serial number 63245-6200, primary military specialty armor, secondary miss, uh, military specialty finance. So he could be a finance clerk, so he does the Joe's taxes for him. Birthplace, Brooklyn, New York. He's an E4. He is a specialist. Middle paragraph reads, There are sections of Brooklyn that are less accessible to outsiders than, mountain, than the mountains of Transylvania. In Heavy Metal's old neighborhood, a trip to Manhattan just across the river was considered a major expedition. Aspiring to become middle class, he was daydreaming pure and simple. Heavy metal enlisted to go to finance school. His ultimate goal was to become a CPA. That's a certified public accountant. But one day at Fort Bel Belvoir, he watched a column of tanks roll by and was never the same again. He put in for a transfer to armor the same day. He's a qualified expert in M16, M1911A1, M250 caliber machine gun, and an M60 machine gun, which are generally mounted on tanks. Bottom paragraph reads in a quote, Many people find comfort in order of discipline. Mathematics reduces the com complexities of the world to manageable sums. Heavy metal likes tanks. They're immutable statements of iron. And I will have to agree, I really enjoy tanks. Um, first time I saw a tank, I was about five or six. I was fishing with my grandpa near Kilbuck Creek in Ohio, which ran alongside railroad tracks. The train rode by that had some Sherman tanks on it, and I was just absolutely in love with them. And Grandpa, having served under General Patton, told me all about the Shermans. Okay, let's take a look at heavy metal again. I apologize, I do not have his machine gun. He came with two accessories, the machine gun and the bane of every collector's, this tiny microphone. This is a replica microphone that I had, um, that somebody donated, uh, it's an, an anonymous donor, and uh, an Eagle Eye viewer, Vinny C., thank you again, pointed out that's a replica. It is supposed to be tan, so I painted it tan as close as I could to the color. Um, these microphones sell for uh, near mint. Now, Heavy Metal is a great-looking action figure. Uh very well done. Uh, Hasbro spent spared no expense making him. Uh, he has these green trousers, and on the side he has a gold pistol. It's slung off of his hip, off this nice belt that wraps around his body, his waist. He has a gold belt buckle, which I'm surprised the gold has survived. It says CS on it. Uh, his pants have these nice little wrinkles in it. Over these brown tanker boots, you can see the straps on the tanker boots. Pretty nice. He's wearing this really nice black leather jacket. Has uh, these ribbed cuffs down on the sleeves. Probably made out of wool. Uh, the jacket is black. He has a uh, number three patch. I'm sure that's for a third armor division. Uh, cross uh, 
his chest he has this other emblem i am not sure what this is if anybody knows please let me know he has a shoulder holster with another gold gun that looks like a 45 that holster wraps all the way around his back that is a very well done holster real to life he's wearing these gnarly green gloves which i really love and uh, he has this green shirt on underneath his coat he has his rank insignias up here on his collar uh, he is wearing a tanker helmet with some goggles and uh, these pads to cover his ears and those are actually speakers for his microphone so he could hear the other people inside his tank uh, these black goggles are non-removable as well as his helmet uh, he has a nice little grin on his face he's happy to be a tanker pretty good looking guy nonetheless a little chin strap there his face is dirty that's a nice paint app that they didn't have to add and it lines up perfectly with his goggles. If they were to move down, you would just see the dirt on his face with his mustache. Cool figure. Uh, you could see why he's very popular. Uh, this is a, a great design and sculpt on this. He is original to the tank from the, the, the original owner. The second knocking everything down in my room here the second biggest problem for collectors are these tow cables this is a genuine cable came with the tank it's made out of this delicate flexible plastic uh, it attaches right to the tread covers they do shrink over time they are very frail. The other bane of collectors are the antenna. This is what I was waiting for to complete it. These antenna are made out of a very soft plastic. They tend to break off at the base. This is the only one that is not broken. I glued this one into place the other day when I received it. They slot right into these holes at the top uh, the many features that come along with this tank these right here are removable grenade launchers you could also launch tear gas canisters from them again they slot right into these little holes um, and I'm firing my set designer again. Uh, there are foot pegs right at the top of the turret where you can fit a Joe on there fairly nicely. I like that idea. Uh, the turret does rotate 360 degrees. Um, there are panels here on the side that are very hard to get to to open uh, these come come off these are storage panels where you could uh, put weapons and whatnot in there so i hardly open those the tread covers do come off they just slide up and you could see, pardon the fur in there, you could see all the bogies in there. These little wheels are called bogies. The ones in the front, if I could uh, move that for you. These are the ones that power the motor that get the treads to run the front and the back. Uh, to turn it on, there's a switch here on the back. Uh, you just push it forward. And you can see that it runs. 
move it back. It runs backwards and put it back into its neutral position. It runs just fine. Um, my landscaper is outside or I would take it out there for a demonstration. But um, the bogies do have a tendency to be very frail, uh, especially the gray parts right here. They break off very easily. Those are um, a little tough to find on the aftermarket. Mine were starting to stick. Uh, so I put a little vegetable oil on it and it works fine. But the big problem is it cat catches dust and lint. And if you have pets like I do, I will find Mickey's fur stuck in them. So let's go ahead and slide this back on. Uh, let's flip it around to the back of the tank. Raise the barrel up, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, it comes with these two, or it comes with four rubber mud flaps. See, they are slotted, and they just flip right, slide right onto the back here. Uh, those are very commonly lost. It has a tow hook, and what is a G.I. Joe vehicle without more removable engine panels let me lift the camera up they're identical so i won't take them both off but that's the engine very nice job by the motorheads down there at hasbro they love their motors and i can't blame them it makes the toy a little more realistic so flipping it around to the other side completely identical the turret or the gun i should say does go up and down uh, the barrel retracts which is a very nice feature this is a dust shroud on it it's sculpted on it retracts right back in and the cool feature about this are the crew compartments. You could put two figures in there, unlike the Mobat where they were completely exposed. You could just slide heavy metal right on in there. Boom, he's covered. His eye slits allow him to see out of the tank very nice feature this up here this is a for um, night vision spotting so they get uh, night vision down on the inside so they could attack at night nice little canadian sticker on the front if this was a u.s tank it would say uh, united states so i am happy to represent canada on this one uh, so this is a, a great toy. I really do enjoy owning it. Uh, it is a blast to have in my collection. Case in point, one of my bogeys came off during the demonstration. So please be careful with this piece. There are a lot of them on the aftermarket and you can find them complete. So I hope you guys in, enjoyed that review. It is a great piece to own. Uh, I do recommend that you get it. Uh, if I had this when I was a kid, I know I would have had a ton of fun with it. Uh, I've loved tanks since I was a little boy, uh, especially something motorized. I know I would have been bugging my parents for batteries. It runs off of um two C-cell batteries. Uh, it, it, uh, it's, it's fast. Um, it works well. The most powerful gear is in reverse. So if you try to get it to climb over something, it's best just to put it in reverse and back it up over. Uh, so 
that's just a, a little tip. Um, wish I could have demonstrated that just a little bit more outside, but with the landscaper out there, um, he doesn't like to be disturbed because um, he's spraying uh, pesticides out there. Our herbicide kills some of these weeds that popped up during the heavy rains. Okay, um, so this brings me to my favorite topic, my favorite segment of the show, Byron's gripe. And yes, there is stuff to gripe about here. Uh, if you're looking for this on the aftermarket, there are a lot of them. Uh, most of them are in pieces. You'll have to build it if the ones are complete. Um, Get ready to dig deep into your pockets. If you're looking for the uh, grenade launchers, they range anywhere from $9.99 to $25.30. Um, a lot of this, the plastic on here is made out of that soft gray plastic, so it does break off real easy. Uh, the wheel bracket um, that piece that I, I slid off to show you the treads and the bogies. Those are inexpensive. Those are $4.99 each. A complete bogey. It comes in several pieces. I would have had to have taken it apart, but there is a brown bracket that attaches to the tank, then a soft gray plastic that attaches to the brown bracket, and then the wheels attach, or the bogies attach to that. Um, those are um, $9.99 for a complete bogey. And that is actually a pretty good price. Uh, there are, they'll run you about 80 bucks <laughs> to get a complete new set on, on your tank. Uh, there is one out there that is complete with box. The driver does come with his gun and microphone. $499.99. Uh, that's almost worth it. I mean, given the price of the microphone alone, um, that is pretty worth it. And the box is really cool. So... Um, while I'm speaking that, let me pull up a picture of the box to show you. So I really like the box art on that. So continuing on, you want a complete cable. There's $50 to $69.93. To me, that's just pure and simple greed. The cable does break off fairly easily. Um... It's made to tow another Joe vehicle. Uh, there are replica cables out there, so be careful. Um, those are even more frail. They're made of resin. One guy's even making them out of steel, which is pretty cool. But if you want the real deal, you got to pay the price for the real cable. The tracks run $6.99 each. The, uh, the bogey is just the wheel itself, uh, two seventy nine to six seventy six each. Um, a complete tank, just by itself, no driver, one forty nine ninety nine. Um, the driver with mic and gun. Here we go, guys. You could buy the driver cheaper without the microphone, but let me put it that way. $400, $409.99. There's no or better offer on that. Those stupid little microphones are... I hate them. I'm using the word hate. Uh, lift tickets microphone, DJ's microphone, sneak peeks microphone, heavy metals microphone. They are all small and it drives the price up on the action figure. If you get it with the microphone, it is ridiculous. People 
stop being so greedy. I know they are rare. All right, let's give the the nine to fiver with a house and kids and a dog with a mortgage or rent a chance to purchase a beloved toy from their childhood so they could share it with their children. Lower these prices and stop being so blasted greedy, please. I bet you're the kind of guy that hoards toilet paper too. Uh, heavy metal by himself, $24 up to $35. An incomplete tank, you know, missing parts. Um, 149 or 119 to 149. The short antenna, uh, 45.99 to 49.99. Uh, the tread cover, uh, 29.99. The hatch that covers the driver, 99.99. The blueprints, 13.99. Mud flaps are 12.99 each. File card six fifty. Deal of the day six fifty for the file card. Driver with gun and file card. Hundred nineteen dollars. You could go take a flying freak at a rolling donut. That's expensive. I am sorry. Mint in box three grand. I apologize for saying that about the rolling donut meant to be comedy for those of you just joining me i forgot to add my disclaimer i only use ebay for the mere convenience not to pick on ebay or the sellers otherwise i would be all day on different sites um, i would suggest that you shop at your local um Vintage, vintage toy shop. That way you're helping the community. You're helping a ma and pa establishment. And the tax money stays in the community. The people on eBay, yeah, they're trying to make a living. And God bless them for it. Free enterprise is a wonderful thing. Um, I should know eBay has a lot of my money. I've made friends with a lot of sellers on eBay. But my goodness, folks, please, please. It's a tough time. Lower your prices a little bit. Spread a little bit of cheer. Uh, this is just getting nuts. Uh, I got really lucky on the antennas. Uh, Agatha, when you requested me to um, review the mauler when it was complete, I had just ordered the antennas that day. I normally don't share the price, but there was a seller in Canada that uh, sold them both for 30 bucks because one was broken. And I snatched it up that day. There were 15 watchers, and I said, that's it, boom, I'm buying it. So, Agatha, I hope you really appreciate uh, this review. I certainly am glad that I got a chance to review this. I wanted to. It's a great toy. I love this tank. Uh, so completely dedicated to you and thank you very much for subscribing to my channel. I've enjoyed our conversations and I've enjoyed all the conversations with everybody else who leaves me comments. You guys are great. Um, I've established a lot of friends from this channel and uh, that's invaluable to me. I love you guys. Um, it's great hearing from you. Uh, I, I do look forward to reading your remarks. I do comment back a uh, little bit busy at work, so it may not be that same day, but you know, a day or two later, but um, I do, I do respond back. Um, this has been an unusually long week for me. Uh, so thank you guys so very much. I, I do, I can't thank you enough. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe that really help helping my channel. I love seeing those numbers go up. That um, really uh, makes my day. Um, appreciate your well wishes with my health. Um, this is, like I said, it's just temporary. 
have to wear it every once in a while. Uh, for those of you who may not know, um, last uh, July I became very ill. Uh, I became septic um, and it, uh, my yeah, lungs got damaged. So occasionally I have to wear oxygen. Uh, irreversible, but I keep on plugging on. Um, kind of ironic for a respiratory therapist, but makes me more sympathetic towards my patients. Uh, so don't worry, guys. I, I'm doing fine. I'm feeling okay. Uh, I just I, I, I sink or swim. So you guys stay safe out there, please. I implore you, stay safe. Um, stay six feet apart. Do your social distancing. Um, wash your hands. That's the most important part. 30 seconds under warm water, not hot water, warm water. Wash vigorously between the fingers, under your fingernails, back of your hands, up to your wrists. And if you can, rinse your hands, fingers down. Okay. After you dry them and you're leaving the bathroom in a public place, use your paper towel to open the door. If uh, the garbage can isn't nearby, just use your shirt. Just use the, the your shirt tail and open the door. You don't want to touch that handle. They are nasty. So please stay safe out there, guys. Um, vitamin C. Um, take your vitamins. I really do care that you guys stay healthy. This is uh, COVID-19 is nothing to joke about. It's, it's a terrible, terrible disease. Um, I know a few people who've lost friends over it already. And um, just please stay safe. It'd break my heart if I found out one of you guys passed away from it. So let's end in a cheery note. Always remember to be kind to one another, especially be kind to animals. They know nothing but unconditional love. And uh, the other day, two men walked into a bar. The second one should have ducked. This is Joe Motion Videos 82 signing off. We'll see you next week for another excellent toy review. I have a Excuse me, I have a really cool one planned. So we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.